this video, I'll be traveling around Italy to show you just how much you can see in a week. I've teamed up with Contiki, the sponsor of this video, which is the number one social travel company for 18 to 35 year olds in order to showcase the seven wonders of the world with a few other talented content creators. I'll be seeing the Colosseum on their eight day Italian espresso trip, as well as some iconic cities like Florence and Venice, but also some lesser known cities that you may not have heard of. And I chose Contiki's Italian trip because I did a similar one when I was 16 and it was that exact trip that made me fall in love with traveling and meeting new people all over the world. Hey, what is up you guys? We are now in one of the main piazzas, the main plaza. This is the Plaza of the People and we're actually on a little uh, walking stroll through Rome right now. We're going ultimately to reach the Colosseum, or before that we're gonna go to the uh, Trevi Fountain. But just walking around Rome is so insane because this is like something I saw nine years ago, so it's like very foggy, but now that I'm here seeing it, it's like all coming back to me and man, I, I'm glad I have a better camera to document this now. We found out that you can actually fill up your water bottle here and at these water fountains because the water is actually good to drink here. Yeah. Which is not something I get to say about a lot of the countries that I travel to. Like you drink the, the uh, tap water or anything, it's not very good. But here in Rome, it's so good that you can drink it out of the fountain. We just saw a couple guys filling up their water bottles here. <laughs> now Charlie's gonna fill up his. I'm gonna, if I get sick now, I'm gonna be very upset. <laughs> yeah, if it turns out that we're wrong. Yeah, I'm gonna be sick now for a long time. <laughs> to join me on this trip, I brought along my friend Charlie, who you may remember from my travels in Bali. I don't know. <laughs> you almost just lost your lucky coin. I know, you almost lost it straight away. Okay, so we made it out to the Trevi Fountain. Now this fountain right here is famous because Roman soldiers used to come here before going off to battle and to wish that they would come back home, they would take a coin and they'd throw it over their left shoulder. So, you know, if you do that, it means you'll be coming back to Rome, or hopefully. So hopefully we're gonna, come back to Rome. We're gonna, we'll yeah, yeah ho hopefully. So we're gonna, we're gonna throw the coin over and hope that we come back to Rome. Three, two, one, woo! Guys, this is Mike from Canada. He's about to throw a coin. All right. Woo! You did it, you're coming back to Rome. Absolutely. We have officially made it to the Colosseum, which you can see right behind me. But this is where there used to be a huge, huge wooden floor and all the gladiators would fight. And when it was first built, they actually had a hundred days straight of straight gladiator fights. So it's pretty crazy being here. I was here once a long time ago, but I never remember being down on this bottom floor. So I'm pretty excited to be, be here in, this, uh, in the gladiator pits. What's it like being at the Colosseum for the first time in your life? Uh, first time at the Colosseum, have you seen, literally, I think it speaks for itself, this place is beyond amazing. Even with all the scaffolding you see most of it, but like just the pure history and everything else that and comes. the pillars, I think. The pillars and the history that comes with this place, I think it's just unfathomable that like some like this sort of stuff was built these many years ago. With this wide angle, you can see the whole Colosseum and it looks incredible. Yeah. This is honestly like one of the main reasons I wanted to come to Italy, like seeing the Colosseum. It's definitely like a, one of those bucket list checks off for, for this uh, trip. And with the introduction of the new Jordan and Israel Uncovered trip launching this April, Kentiki has completed the set and now offers trips to all seven new wonders of the world. So you can do this exact one or visit any of the six others. It's now just about 1 p.m. and we finished the little tour that we did this morning for the whole Colosseum. Now we pretty much have like four hours to just kind of walk around all we want. Kentiki just kind of gives you a lot of free time, so if you want to go explore, you can. We have officially made it to the Pantheon here in Rome, and this is a place of worship of all gods. So uh, they actually allowed all gods to be worshipped here, and it's got this huge, huge hole in the middle of the dome, and the floor here is actually like slanted, so if it rains or snows and everything, it just goes and rolls off. It's pretty cool, it's this giant, giant dome and it's over 2,000 years old. It's actually the third one though because the two other ones burnt down until they realized, hey, let's make it out of like cement or some kind of stone and not just burnable wood. Cause my heart is on hold on, hold on, so I need you to play on, play on. We have
have now made it to Castle St. Angelo. This is a second century castle here in Rome, and uh, supposedly it houses a bunch of Renaissance paintings. And I love the Renaissance time, it's just like my favorite. Leonardo da Vinci, I almost said DiCaprio. <laughs> you know, second century Renaissance time, you know, Leonardo da DiCaprio. <laughs> my favorite inventor. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. And it was actually originally built as a tomb for the Roman Empire, but uh, then they just kept building and kept building. So it never really went and decayed like a lot of other buildings here in Rome. A lot of things are in ruin. This one they just kept building and they're like, you know what? Let's take it from his tomb to like, you know, maybe we'll make it a prison, then we'll make it a fortress, then we'll make it all this cool stuff. And they're like, yeah, let's do it. One thing I really like about Italy is just the history here. Everything is so like old and historical. And it's some kind of, it, like everything here looks like it could be a part of some famous historical you know, event, everything. Like this castle right here was really famous. And uh, it's just, you know, you're just walking, I just walked down the road and I literally found this castle. That's how I found it. I didn't look it up. I just walked down the street, looking for gelato, and I found this castle. <laughs> so like everywhere you go, you could just find something pretty cool. class here in Italy. This is like a local experience and uh, we got all 47 of us making pasta right now. It's actually rather difficult so I'm pushing I'm pushing very hard on this and I'm not supposed to be but I've never made pasta like this before. I usually just take it out of the box. Now she's putting it through what looks like a spaghetti or like a like a Play-Doh thing. She squeezes it. It's like a wet blanket. <laughs> it feels like a wet blanket. Food that we made. You guys enjoying it? Super. You think it's actually good? It is good. Amazing. Yeah, I'm actually surprised. It's, it's actually good. It is good. It's it's a great job. We actually we actually did a decent job. Did so <laughs> made it to the Vatican and look at the top of the ceiling it is completely gold above us it is crazy and it stretches on for what seems like a mile this thing is huge it is massive it is our last morning here in Rome we're actually about to hop on a bus right after this and drive four hours to Florence by the time we arrived in Florence the Sun was setting and we head out into the city for a karaoke night Mike, Charlie, and I have come out to this bridge here. This is one of the famous bridge here in Florence. It was a uh, crazy night last night with the karaoke, uh, but we made it out this morning so we could do the Duomo. We could see the statue of David, all these famous things all here in Florence. And Florence, I gotta say, is one of my favorite cities. I'm so glad to be back here because, you know, it has such like crazy Renaissance history here. All these statues all along here of all these different Renaissance, you know, Politician, aristocrats, painters, everything like that. When I was 16, I don't think I fully appreciated 
the art here, but now like coming here, it's actually like really, really cool. So just since I'm really, you know, into the whole Renaissance history and seeing the statue of David, seeing all these like huge, like famous statues around here in the Piazza dei Signoria. This is like one of the most famous squares to come to, so it's like quite popular, quite crowded. So we're seeing the recreation of David. It's like a couple hour wait to go see the actual David, but you get an idea right now. inside the Duomo which is one of the huge buildings here in Florence really popular and if you get a uh, if you reserve a ticket beforehand we're just kind of walking around so we just walked in here but if you reserve a special ticket you can go all the way up to the top of this tower the dome which is insane I've done it last time and I highly recommend it so if you're coming to Florence you have to go and get a uh, special ticket and go up here because it is amazing a day of exploring Florence yesterday. We've driven an hour and a half out this morning to a town called San Giamano. And it is this big, walled city. It looks really cool in like an old historical town. Charles! Hi! You know what, man, this is Charles. He is from South Korea. The other <laughs> night, the other night when we did, uh, we did karaoke, he did Gangnam Style. And he's the only one, <laughs> he was the only one who could sing the whole word in Korean. Charles is one of the guys here who came out on this trip uh, solo. He's like enjoying it. There's many people who came out here in solo. We made a bunch of friends, so it's pretty cool that uh, he was able to do this. And you know, our friend Mike as well. So that's one of the advantages of the Kentucky tour. You can come out here, you can go solo, and then you meet a whole bunch of friends and you explore around. Yo guys, how are you feeling this morning? Amazing. You guys go out last night? just had wine though. So there has just been endless flowing wine non-stop on this tour obviously because we're in Italy every day it's just like you can have like five to ten bottles of wine at your table for dinner so the story behind the towers here in San Gimano is that at one point all the families wanted power and building a tower you know the tallest you could was a symbol of power and at one point it got to be kind of you know too much there's a bunch of towers here so the town was like all right enough of these towers we're only gonna keep the 14 best looking ones so that's what they did and we're about to go climb up the tallest one right now which I believe is this one right here oh god how fit <laughs> <laughs> we made it up to the top of the Torre, Torre Grossa the tallest tower here in San Gimano it probably has the best view over the entire city here before this night is over I will guide you home Stop for some gelato. I got strawberry and sour cherry. Strawberry, caramel, sour cherry, and passion fruit. You got four different ones. I did, yeah. <laughs> I got uh, strawberry, uh, chocolate, mango, and pistachio. You can get so many. And what'd you get to us? Lots of variety. Here. Pistachio, bananas, cocoa, a cocoa. Yeah. Jeez. I got every single flavor that I have here. This is such like a nice, small, quiet little town here in the Tuscan Hills. Can I just look over these, all these hills here, all the vineyards? I, well, I assume they're vineyards, but um, yeah, we have such a such a nice day here just to be walking around here before we head off to our wine tasting. Came out to the Chianti region for a quick wine tasting at this pretty cool looking castle you probably saw from the drone shots. What do you think of this wine? <laughs> Cheers. We then headed back for our last night in Florence where we all went out for a little food walking tour. So we came out to get drinks before we go out to eat. This is kind of like the Italian tradition here. So I got this thing called an Aperol Spritz and what's in it is Aperol, Prosecco and soda water. And it's, it's a lot of alcohol so... It is extremely strong, but it's really good, and it's one of the Italian drinks here. 
So we've come out to the next place, which is called Antico Vinayo, and this is where we're gonna get our kind of appetizers, where we get bread, the cheese, and the meats. It's very uh, common in Italian culture, especially here in Florence, where you go from one place to one place to one place uh, throughout the night. First one is the Florentine uh, salami, which is, you know, it smells really amazing. Mmm, man. That has to be some of the best salami I've ever had. Which one's been your favorite? Um, definitely the salami. It is, just, it is just ridiculous. I mean, it, is, it doesn't taste processed. It's literally just like super fresh. So we've now made it out to the place where we're going to be having our main course. It's called Osteria de Berencelli. We have gotten the meat here. It is like, for some reason in Florence, it has to be basically bloody. And uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of a sin to ask them to make it well done. That's what we were told. So we have our very rare steak here, as well as potatoes and salad, which is just standard. But uh, we're gonna see. I don't think I've ever had a steak or just any kind of meat that has been this rare. So. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. I mean, it cuts really easy. Mm. waiting for you to swallow it. It's actually... I thought it was going to be much like harder to chew. It, it took only a second, but uh, it is really, really good and like tender. I think it's the perfect... I mean, they, they have it down to the science here at this family restaurant. So, uh, I highly recommend this meat. Even though it kind of looks strange, like the redness, it doesn't look right, but uh, I highly recommend it. So we've driven about an hour and a half outside of Florence this morning, ultimately going up to Verona and then Venice, but we've stopped here at the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which is right behind me. It is at a 4% lean, and what's pretty interesting is they originally built the first three parts of the tower, and they saw that it was leaning, and they're like, well crap, it's leaning, how can we fix it? So they took a break for about 100 years, and then they just continued to do it, where they thought they could like kind of correct the, the curve, but it ultimately did not end up working, so we still have the Leaning Tower Pisa. <laughs> A couple hours later on the bus, we've made it to Verona, and we're at Romeo and Juliet's. We're actually at Juliet's place where you can see the giant uh, balcony up here where Juliet was. And there's a sculpture of Juliet in the back here. That's a good photo. And it's traditional and it's customary to rub Juliet's boobs for good luck. And uh, it's pretty interesting. There's a whole line here to rub Juliet's boobs. <laughs> So right behind me in Verona, there is a giant whalebone hanging from this arch. Now this whalebone was originally uh, the first like advertising or marketing for the pharmacy because they used to crush up whalebone for medicinal purposes. And there is actually still a pharmacy here on the corner and they just left it. And the story behind this whalebone too is that if you have never told a lie, then this whalebone will fall, but it has never fallen ever. Let's, let's see if I get crushed right now. Uh, all right, it's still up there. You're a truthful guy, right, Charles? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's, he's, he's walking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, Martin. Uh, these guys are all liars. They are all liars. You know, I can't trust any of you guys. I trust none of you. Making our way up to this castle for sunset. Uh, last time I was here in Italy, I never saw this here in Verona, so I'm super excited. It's actually a pretty scenic view that we're walking. We're walking across this big, big bridge right here, and then up to this castle. Your mom is 
sick, but you tear me to pieces. So where does it come from? Charlie, we made it. We made it. We made it to Venice. This is one of my favorite cities here in Italy, although a little bit touristy because it is so amazing. You can come and see these huge, massive clock towers. You can see this crazy architecture all around. You can see like the beautiful gondolas going through the alleyways or the little canals, which we are gonna be going on a little later today. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> She's like juggling birds. Oh God, I'm two pigeons, I'm two pigeons. Is he worth five in like? <laughs> Charlie, look at me. Look at me, Charlie. What's up? Bird whisperer. Oh. Up you go. Wait, here. Good. You just like summon them. Come on. Yeah, but we nice. What are you doing, Katie? Dude, I'm feeding a pigeon in this San Marco Square. Ow, he's pecking me. Ah! There's two of them. This feels so weird. I've never held a pigeon. Hello. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Be free. Oh, that was play. pretty sweet. So we've walked off into one of the first little alleyways. And this is where you start to see some really cool stuff. When it gets really tight and you can see all the gondolas and the canals. This is one of the main bridges here in Venice. Towards the back though, you have to walk through a couple of streets to get here. And you can see, kind of like at one of the big boat piers. So a lot of boats, a lot of ferry boats and taxi boats come here. So there's like a lot of people being dropped off. And then on the other side, just over here, there's all these beautiful restaurants and gondolas watching all along the side. Forty-five minute ferry ride away from Venice is an island called Burano, and it is this colorful island where uh, fishermen live. And it's all these colorful houses, and each one's a different color for uh, the fishermen to live in. And so that in the mist and like the fog, when the fishermen are up in the morning, they can see the island where they live and come back and uh, not crash into the island, basically. And everyone is pretty much a different color. There's a couple variations and it looks just really picturesque. This is the place like you want to come for just a quick lunch and then head back to Venice. back in Venice and we are hopping on one of the gondolas. This is my first time ever riding a gondola actually and uh, what better place than in the canals of Venice, Italy. <laughs> this is amazing guys. <laughs> are you guys getting engaged too Mike and uh, Mike and Charlie? Yeah, I mean, to is, me this, is this the spot? So it is the late afternoon here in Venice and it is a, it's a nice peaceful little ride here. Other than me vlogging, it's very quiet and uh, I like it. It's like we have a 30 minute ride all throughout the canal. <laughs> Tiki has adventure-filled tours going all over the world that are perfect for 18 to 35 year olds. We saw one of the seven wonders of the world on this trip, but they now have tours going to the other six wonders as well. And if you book their ultimate all seven wonders of the world trip, Contiki will cover your rent for two months while you travel to all seven of these bucket list destinations so that you can travel the world without having to feel guilty about your rent money going to waste. So, check out the link in the description to do this exact tour or one of hundreds that Contiki offers. Thank you for watching Road Nation, and until next time, Explore the world.